It's time for Focus on Pearl River County. And, of course, this is brought to you by your local Allstate agent, the Pygott Agency with Jason Pygott. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a torrential downpour. You can't see out of your windshield. And if you have the wrong car insurance, you might have to make it rain to fix your bumper. So switch to Allstate, save money, and be better protected from mayhem like me. Jason Pygott has offices in Picayune. Make sure you have the right coverage. Give the Pygott Agency a call today. 601-798-7005. Based on coverage limits selected, subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. Allstate Bar and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. WRJW, Picayune, Mississippi. This is Focus on Pearl River County, a public affairs presentation addressing issues of civic concern with local community leaders. Now, today's Focus... Good morning. Time now is 818. You're listening to the WRJW Focus on Pearl River County. Now, today, again, is our nonprofit edition of this show. I have with me a very special member of our community, Ms. Rebecca Carl. She is a representative for Take Off Pounds Sensibly, also known as the TOPS program. And not only is she a representative of the organization, but she also has been crowned the queen of for Mississippi's TOPS program. How are you this morning? I'm good, thank you. Good. So uh, when when the TOPS program reached out to WRJW about your story specifically, it just felt very special. It felt obviously very close to home. You you live in Career, I think, and um, we, we were just very excited to share about this opportunity. And, you know, we, we love hearing about how just in general, having a sense of community and having Pro River County be a support system for you can really just boost everyone to a better quality of life. Yes. Um, it definitely did help me to have a place to go where there were people who I knew were like-minded, who were, you know, having the same struggles that I was having, um, very supportive. You know, some people can't do it without a support group and Mm -hmm. I was one of those people (laughs) yeah you know I needed to have somebody around me that could kind of encourage me on my bad days and lift me up you know yeah um so yeah it was it helped a lot well even the most introverted person still needs at least one other person to help them out you know by nature we are social creatures let's get started talking about you know what exactly tops is i know tops t-o-p-s it stands for take off pounds sensibly i know it's a non-profit but just talk to us a little bit about kind of what tops does for a community or for an individual okay um yeah it's tops take off pounds sensibly it's um more like a support group to kind of just help you to move towards better health Um, you know, I don't, I know, I guess some people would call it like a weight loss group. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, you know, it really is just people that are there to encourage you. You know, we do have programs weekly, um, you know, on different topics related to weight. Um, you know, how some, some people do programs on how your mind affects you know, your thoughts, how that affects um, your weight and your ability to lose. Well, and it kind of sounds like, you know, decades ago when people thought about health versus weight, it was more so of making sure that you reach a certain weight, that you get all of that weight off. But right. as we grow and mature as, you know, really – um uh, a country in a world, we have realized that there's a there's a wider variety of focuses that we need to have on health, right. and it kind of sounds like Tops has sort of expanded to where they touch on multiple different types of health. And yes. if in the process you end up losing weight, then fantastic. If in the process you just have a healthier mindset, you're emotionally healthier, you know, you're you become physically stronger, what have you, then those right. things are awesome as well. Right, and I think. Um, you know, for a long time, people didn't really include, um, 
like for for instance like the spiritual side like i had to do because that was my story you know everybody there excuse me has a different story and so you learn from other people's stories what might be missing in yours Mm -hmm. you know and so you know for me i you know god was a big part of my story because i was fighting a spiritual battle as well as a physical battle you know with my weight and where i was in my life um i was in a bondage you know and i i couldn't get out by myself like Mm -hmm. i had to have help to just keep me focused and get me to the end game you know (laughs) where i knew i was trying to get but you know and then like i've learned things from other people about their struggles that gave me hope that i could also you know get to where i need to get Mm -hmm. you know yeah so you know let's talk a little bit about your story in general and you you have described yourself as being diagnosed with obesity in the past you know let's talk about how that sort of affected your life Okay, well, I mean, I was always the big kid, you know, growing up, I was always the big kid, always struggled with it. I was always unhappy about my weight, I, I, as far back as I can remember. Um, and, you know, as I got older, <clears throat> had children, you know, of course, you. it never occurred to me that I could lose weight. I just never thought about it, you know. Mm-hmm. But then at some point, as you get older, you realize like this is not the best quality of life that I could have and you want more and Mm -hmm. so I had gone you know I had gone I I tried everything you know did the I did Weight Watchers I did Nutrisystem Jenny Craig you know all of those Mm -hmm. bad things that everybody tries and as soon as I finished doing all of that or it got too expensive and I couldn't do it Um, I just gained it right back because nothing really changed in me, you know, and, and it took me probably 50 years to realize that my battle was a lot bigger than just me gaining weight, you know, like, you know, as I began to pray about it and really seek God about it, um, he began to show me that my issue was a sin issue in my life because I put food above everything else you know I um I idolized food food became an addiction in my life and it it took over my life you know it it just took everything from me it took Mm -hmm. my ability to go out and enjoy my life and have fun and you know do stuff with my grandkids that I wanted to do I just I I hardly wanted to leave the house you know if we had things to do with friends I didn't want to be the hair because I You know, I don't have anything to wear, kind of. That's the excuse mm -hmm. we all use, right? So, um, but, you know, I've realized that I had a bigger problem. And so I've really started focusing on the spiritual side of it and really seeking God about it. And I found every scripture that I could find and I put it in my pantry. And, you know, I just started really having a conviction about you know, my body being a temple of God and me not doing what I should be doing Mm -hmm. to protect it and keep it. Because, you know, I realized that Jesus died for me to have a a freedom. You know, it became about freedom and not so much about weight loss. It became, for me, about not being in bondage to something like giving that thing control Mm -hmm. over my life but me taking back that control and giving it to him who it belongs to anyway yeah you know um and and that's when my victory started um but you know there were times when you know of course you go to your meetings and you weigh every week and you gain a little bit but you know you got these people behind you going oh it's okay you know (laughs) you're gonna do better Mm -hmm. next week and you do because you know For me, I need that accountability Mm -hmm. also. And I think it helped me to know, you know, well, they're watching and you're being an encouragement to them. Mm -hmm. Like I started not looking at it so much for me, but about the people who were there who maybe felt like they couldn't do it. 
You know, like, I changed my focus, I think, to others. Mm -hmm. And it helped me to do better. It's weird. (laughs) But I guess that's what we're supposed to do as Christians anyway. (laughs) Yeah, well, you know, touching on, yeah, that aspect of Christianity, which, of course, that's your that's your journey right. started with Christianity and then you you paired this new faith with tops right. but you know yeah that is a lot whenever it comes to Christianity is you sort of first of all all of the vices that you have all of the earthly struggles that you have you do give those to our heavenly father you know sort of the lay them at the feet of the cross right. kind of thing right. and then When you give up all of your earthly struggles, it makes it easier for you to serve other people and for you to provide for other people. And for me personally, that's one of the best and fastest ways to start feeling blessed is to help other people. And you have to, I mean, you have to balance it with taking care of yourself. And it sounds like that's, that is something that tops really has helped you do is even though you were there encouraging other people you still were learning how to do things to take care of yourself or like as you refer to it um like how scripture says to take care of your body which is a temple right you know um excuse me let's talk a little bit about you had said or at one point in time we talked a little bit off air yesterday at one point in time you reached like a breaking point like you felt like you kind of hit rock bottom yes um and that happened I had gotten so big, and and I'm a nurse, you know, so I knew that there were changes taking place in my body that were not good, you know, like everything was hurting. I I was getting a lot of visceral fat, which is the fat that kind of grows up under your organs, Mm -hmm. Um, and I never had that before, but, it, you know, if I would eat something, my stomach would just protrude like I was pregnant like it had nowhere to go I was just so big and you know I had gotten up to almost 250 pounds and I'm Mm only 5'4 so I I look pregnant I mean there's some pictures of me my daughter showed me it's like you know me pulling a suitcase and I looked pregnant Mm -hmm. you know and I didn't even realize I looked that bad yeah (laughs) but um well, and you know. the thing is, like what you were saying with, with you being of a shorter stature, and then also we all personally have that mindset of, of what we feel like looks good when when you look at yourself in the mirror, you know, and it, it kind of just sounds like with what you're saying is, especially for you, again, like with your height and with your personal preferences, you just were becoming very dissatisfied with the way that your body right. looked paired with the way that you physically were feeling. Yeah, well, and I mean, I knew, uh, yeah, I, there, I was just, you know, I just felt like I was popping out of my skin. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. that bad for me, you know, and um. I went to get up one morning, and I couldn't hardly get out of my bed. Like, I have a memory foam bed, and I was kind of sunk in my bed. And I couldn't get my leg over to get out. And I'm thinking, okay, well, this is not a good sign, you know. (laughs) So I had to kind of drag myself, hold on to my headboard, and drag myself out of the bed. And, you know, it just so happened that that day they had um, a meeting and I knew because my sister had gone to tops for years and she had always been like oh you should come you know Mm -hmm. and yeah I'll be there one day (laughs) but I just I wasn't ready like I feel like God had to take me on that journey and show me how bad it could get Mm -hmm. before I really took it serious you know to make the changes and to not be afraid I, I feel like you know I'm I'm going to an addiction recovery class at our church and it's teaching me too that you know we talked about this last night there's a fear associated with losing weight sometimes I think if it's an addiction related thing just mm-hmm. like changing at all because you don't really know who you are anymore after you've been bound by something for so long it's hard to know who you're going to be and you're not comfortable with that because you don't you don't know you. You know, you have to get to know yourself again. And I think that's where I'm at now. I'm trying to to know who I am and what I like and you know, what's okay for me and you know, it's like you know, but a lot of people don't look at that food thing like it could be an addiction. Um 
they mm-hmm. just feel like it's the food, you know, or, you know, it's easy to not take responsibility when yeah. it's food. You well, know what I'm and saying? you got to eat. <laughs> yeah, and especially in this area, you know, the southern region in yes. general, yes. it seems like every food is something that the rest of the country considers to be a comfort food or, or you know, junk food right. or something like that because our food has a lot of calories in it yeah. honestly you know and man does man does southern food taste so right. good but it's kind of yeah you know it's really easy to it's really easy to say well it's just the type of food that we have in this area right mm-hmm. right and you know and I know for me it was the amount of food I was eating obviously because mm-hmm. you don't just get like that you know from eating regular portions like with tops they don't you don't have a diet plan you know they they kind of go by the um exchange diet like if you're asking for what diet to use they would suggest the exchange diet which is basically you can eat whatever you want Mm -hmm. you know there's no you can't eat that um but you just have to watch your portions, you know. Okay. You, and you have to exchange one food for another. If you don't want bread, you might could have a biscuit. But you got to count that, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, it's good. I, for me, you know, when I first started, I wrote everything down because that's what I needed to keep me accountable, you know. And it helps. I mean, it's been proven to help. You don't have to do that. But, you know, do what it you know, do whatever it's going to take to Mm -hmm. get you where you need to be, you know, and learn. I'm learning to love myself enough to do that for myself now, you know, like before I just, I never felt control Mm -hmm. over myself. Like it was almost, it was like I was living outside of myself or something and just watching all this stuff happen to me. Yeah. You were sort of disassociated. Yeah. I wasn't self-aware at all of what I was doing to myself. Um, And that's one of those things where with any type of addiction, um, you not only don't necessarily realize what you're doing to yourself but indirectly there are so many other people that you love and care about and that also love and care about you that are being affected as well right. like you said that you you were kind of afraid or or sometimes even felt ashamed to go out and spend time with your friends and family out in right. public right so tops again Take Off Pound Sensibly is a national nonprofit organization. There's also, there's a state program um, for Mississippi. And then there's also a program in, in our area as well. So so the the meetings that you attend, they're in Pearl River County, correct? Mm-hmm. We have, um, there's chapters all over Mississippi. Mm-hmm. We have two in the Picayune area. And then there's a virtual, um, a virtual one as well. Um, that I believe just started. Um, So if somebody wanted to attend a TOPS meeting, let's say one of the ones that are in person, kind of walk us through a little bit what that looks like whenever, like, like where, when you first get there, when, you know, kind of how long it lasts, what types of things you may learn or experience while you're there on any given day. Okay. um, Well, when you first get there, you know, you'll have to, now, you can join online. You can go online um, to join tops.club. Join tops.club. Um, and there's a lot of information there, so you can get a lot of information mm-hmm. there. Um, but you would just go in. You know, if you hadn't signed up, they would sign you up. You would weigh. Um, most meetings, now I can just tell you about my meeting. I don't know if they do them all exactly the same, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, we have like a window between nine and 10 to weigh, and then the meeting starts at 10. Somebody, you know, we have these little pledges that will say, you know, tops pledges. Um, we usually will say the pledge of allegiance. Um, and then we'll, somebody will present, um, a program you know and different educational program yes different Mm -hmm. members choose different things so it's always different um I'm more of a psychological kind of like I I feel like we have to involve the whole person so usually Mm -hmm. when I do it it's going to be something psychological you know Mm -hmm. because I that intrigues me and I I feel like it played a big part in my story so Mm -hmm. that's what I talk about 
But, um, you know, everybody talks about what, I guess, touches them um, in a way that it can help other people. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, we just talk about the different, you know, there'll be, like, questions and answers. And um, it's just, it's more of a, it's, it's way more personal than you know like Weight Watchers ever was Mm -hmm. we're like a family really it's a place that you can come and you're wanted there you know like they really like you (laughs) and they encourage you and yeah you know it's it was it's different it's really about you as an individual it sounds like yes 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 and then you you have the support of the whole entire everyone present and yes. beyond, because again, you also have your your virtual programs that you can attend, and then you have the support of people who are members throughout the state and again throughout the country. Mm-hmm. Um, let's say that somebody maybe is contemplating just just visiting, you know, sort of like just dipping their toe in the water a little bit, but they're nervous, apprehensive, maybe experiencing some of that embarrassment or shame that you said that you have felt in the past. What would you say to somebody who? maybe doesn't even maybe they're not even ready yet to say out loud that they want to consider something like that um i would say just step out and give it a try Mm -hmm. you know like we're gonna welcome anybody with open arms like i know like i want to share my story with people you know i want people to know there was nobody more unsure of themselves than I was when I walked in there and I had a lady tell me I remember when you first came you know you were sitting in a corner all by yourself and I was (laughs) like I had forgotten that Mm. and you know now I'm like the queen I got the tiara you know I got all this stuff and and it's changed me you know just taking that chance on myself and and on other people you know just trust the process and and just do it for you you know Mm -hmm. do it for you like and if you don't want to do it for you do it for me you know (laughs) do it for me because I know that we'll give you the encouragement Mm -hmm. that you need like there's a good group of people there and you know it was weird that like I always felt like they were my people you know like they're my people and and I know that it's a safe place Mm -hmm. you know it's a safe place you're not saying for sure you're not saying that none of the other programs work it's just that for you this is where you found your people right talk to us just for just have just a few minutes left let's talk a little bit about how you got to be crowned queen did you apply for that did somebody um like recommend you or is there some type of like I don't know, uh, like a point system or something that you achieved? Yeah, they, um, no, I actually was crowned my chapter because there's different chapters mm-hmm. in Mississippi. So the, I was the chapter queen of my chapter, which meant that I had lost the most in my chapter for that year. Okay. So in the state part of it, like I had no idea that that was going to happen. Like that was a complete complete surprise and I I mean I didn't even really know at the time that they even did that you know and um until they crowned me queen and then you know people kept asking me did you hear anything from court you know the corporate and I'm like no yeah like I, I didn't even think about it and then I got a phone call one day from um Donna Abair our I guess she's the coordinator for Louisiana and Mississippi. Okay. I I probably don't have that right. I I don't know what her title is, but she's up there. She's upper. Um, Yeah. And she told me that I was the state queen. So I actually lost more than everybody in the whole state of Mississippi. And that's how I got to be the queen. Oh, my so, goodness. And I can remember trying to start this thing and thinking I knew I had at least 60 pounds to lose. And I remember the hopelessness and how I felt like, oh, that's so much. And if I would have just started back then when I only had 40, you know, I could have probably did that, but I can't do this. Mm-hmm. And um, and that just all changed when I started going to the meetings mm-hmm. and realizing, you know, there's people here who are going to fight for me with me, Yeah. you know, and, and it just really helped me to have that support, you mm-hmm. know, 
and that accountability. Well, and it sounds like one of those things where nobody stands in front of you, nobody stands behind you, everyone stands <coughs> beside you. You're all yes. in this together. And it's not like you joined because you were like, oh, they have this thing called a queen. That's what I want. <laughs> you just wanted a better version of yourself, even just mentally and emotionally. Right. And then for you personally, your journey to a better self includes some physical health changes as well. Yes. So I know that if somebody wanted more information about the TOPS program, the easiest way for them to get that is to visit the website, which is just TOPS.org. Um, yeah, well, TOPS.org is one, and then you could go to join TOPS, J-O-I-N-T-O-P-S dot club, um, is what our area coordinator told me. Um, mm-hmm. That was another one that I wasn't aware of. Okay. Um, and that there's a lot of information there, too. Um, and, that, and they may want to try that one first. Okay. Um, join but, tops dot club. Yes. And then what are the, you said there's two chapters in Picayune. Do you know um, both of the location information? Um, yes. The, um, the one that I go to is 0298, chapter 0298. And it's, um, now I'm drawing a blank on the name of the church, but we meet at the church. Um, I guess that's Cooper, Cooper Road. Um, the church right before the Woods subdivision. Okay. I don't know the name of the church. Honestly, I'm sorry. No, but, that's okay. Um, but we meet on a Thursday morning, usually. Right now we're meeting on Fridays because they're doing, like, Sunday's um, vacation Bible school. Uh-huh. So right now we're meeting on Fridays. They're at um, 10 o'clock. Um, you weigh between 9 and 9.30. Um, and then the other one is... Zero one nine eight, and they meet at the um off of Highway Eleven. It's the Kiwanis Club. Okay. Yeah. And I don't even know if that's right, but it's it's there, and mm-hmm. they meet on a Monday at six, I believe. That's what it used to be in the evening. Yes, but all of that should be you know on that Join Tops Club. They can put their um. Mm-hmm. Their zip code in, I think, and it'll tell okay. them where the chapters are um, okay. and where they're meeting. And then TOPS is, again, nationally known, and so that's one of those situations where it, any of your internet searches, you can just search like TOPS program mm-hmm. in Mississippi, and it should it pretty should. much bring you to where you need to be. And they can also um, call Alice McGrath. It's um, M-C-G-R-A-T-H, mm-hmm. and she gave me a number. She's our South Mississippi advocate. Um, it's 601-273-0929, um, and she can answer, you know, specific questions for the whole state of Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Well, and then also, again, for anyone listening in some of our surrounding areas, there's also meetings in Louisiana. And again, you can just go to the website and um, search for whatever your zip code is, and it'll give you however many chapters there are in your zip code or surrounding areas. Yes. Rebecca, thank you so much for coming in. This has been really, honestly, a wonderful conversation. I, you know, I love sitting down and talking to someone, first of all, who represents any nonprofit, but especially you being a member of our county and just the achievements that you have had, not only just physically, but like you were saying, within the whole person, you know, um, it sounds really special that you have found this organization, TOPS, and even though it's take off pounds sem- sensibly, it's more than just physically removing that weight. It's, it's, it's having a support group to help you become really the person that you want to be if not even more so than that yeah freedom that's that's what it's about it they help you to find freedom you know? i love it yeah thank you so much for coming in um i hope that you have a great rest of your day well thank you you too Focus on Pearl River County is a public affairs presentation of WRJW 1320 AM, a Pearl River Communications station.